let's start out by talking about where photosynthesis takes place. So here is a leaf, and on the right is a chloroplast, which is the organelle where photosynthesis takes place. And this was described in the electron cell structure, but we're going to review it here. So just starting out with the anatomy of the leaf. There is a waxy covering that protects the leaf and prevents water loss, and this is called the cuticle. This cuticle layer is produced by a cell layer called the upper epidermis. And we'll talk more about uh, plant anatomy in the plant's lecture. Um, but what we're going to focus on now is a layer of cells known as the mesophyll. So in the mesophyll layer, photosynthesis takes place. Here, on the underside of a leaf, you'll see openings. And these openings, or pores, are known as stomates. Gas can enter and leave the cell through the stomates. So what's going to happen is CO2 is going to enter, photosynthesis will take place, and oxygen can leave. You notice that there's gaps between, this is called the spongy mesophyll, right here. And these cells in the spongy mesophyll are separated out, and these air spaces that are created allow for the diffusion of gases. So the CO2 enters, can diffuse in to the mesophyll cells where photosynthesis takes place. The opening and closing of the stomates is controlled by what's called guard cells. So the guard cells surround these, and they can close it off, open up. In addition to gases, something else that can be lost is water. So stomates are a major source of water loss through a process called transpiration. So water loss through transpiration this is especially a problem in a climate that is hot and dry. Here we have what's called a vascular bundle. And the vascular tissues of the plant in here, there are two types, xylem and phloem. The xylem is used to transport water and minerals from the roots up to the rest of the plants. The phloem is used to transport the products of photosynthesis, glucose, to the rest of the cell. So photosynthesis takes place in the leaves primarily, and the glucose can then be transported to other parts of the plants, such as the roots. So this is leaf structure, and the mesophyll cells are the location of photosynthesis. Within the cells where photosynthesis actually takes place is the chloroplast. So this is just showing a chloroplast within a cell. There's a fluid called stroma within a chloroplast, and the chloroplasts are surrounded by a double membrane. Like the mitochondria, this double membrane uh, is taken as support for the endo endosymbiosis theory. Recall that the endosymbiosis theory says that organelles are a result of a symbiotic relationship between early prokaryotes. In this case, um, an early prokaryote might have engulfed another photosynthetic prokaryote, and eventually that other prokaryote became dependent on the larger prokaryote and became part of it and is the chloroplast. Like mitochondria, chloroplasts also have their own DNA. Again, that's also support for the endosymbiosis theory. So we have this double membrane, we have this fluid called stroma, and then we have these stacks of disks called grana. These disks, which are membranous, are called thylakoids. And we'll talk in more detail about which, what happens, where each process takes place. But one thing in general to remember is that the dark reactions take place in the stroma.
or the light independent reactions, whereas the light reactions take place in the grana. And the photosynthetic enzymes are embedded in the membranes of the thylakoid. Cyanobacteria are also capable of undergoing photosynthesis photosynthesis, yet they do not contain chloroplasts. Instead, photosynthesis takes place in infoldings of the cell membranes of these prokaryotes. So the infoldings in the cyanobacteria cell membrane are also called thylakoid membranes because they're the site of photosynthesis. All right, so two parts to photosynthesis, light reactions and dark reactions. We're going to focus first on the light reactions or the light dependent reactions. This is a stage of photosynthesis during which light energy is to used to produce ATP. ATP is needed for the dark reactions, and that's when glucose is produced. So light reactions produce the, the ATP. The ATP is then used in the dark reactions to actually form glucose. To understand the light reactions, you need to understand a little bit about light and pigments. Pigments are substances that absorb visible light. So pigments absorb visible light. There are several pigments that we'll talk about with photosynthesis. For example, chlorophyll A, uh, which participates in the light reactions, also chlorophyll B, and another group of pigments called the carotenoids. These are actually considered the accessory photosynthetic pigments. We'll talk more about um, the functions of each of these. So we have chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, and carotenoids. So different pigments absorb different wavelengths of light. And different wavelengths of light are different colors. So you notice here shorter wavelengths of light, for example, 400 nanometers, appears violet. Longer wavelength here in the 500 range appears blue, and then so on, and then red light has a much longer wavelength. So several things can happen. A, a pigment can absorb light or it can transmit light and reflect the light. The reason plants appear green is that chlorophylls absorb violet, blue, and red light. So they're absorbing all of this. They transmit and reflect green light. So when you look at a plant, that, that plant the pigments inside the, the um, chloroplasts have absorbed this part of the spectrum. And what you're seeing is, is what's reflected back by them, which is the green light. So these absorb blue, violet, red light, and they reflect and transmit green light. Carotenoids actually absorb violet, blue, and green light. So they're absorbing violet, blue, and green light. And that leaves the red and orange part of the spectrum to be transmitted and reflected. So red and orange are transmitted and reflected. Sweet potatoes and carrots are very high in carotenoids. And that's why, when we look at them, they appear orange or reddish orange and the, or yellowish because they're reflecting yellow or orange light. Something else to understand about light is that it behaves as both a wave and a particle. So light has um, aspects to it that are like a wave and then other aspects that are like a particle. Photons are particles of light that contain a particular amount, amount of energy. So a photon is a particle of light that contains a certain amount of energy. 
the shorter the wavelength, the greater the energy in the photon. So violet light has a shorter wavelength than red light. So therefore, violet light is going to contain more energy. And I'm going to use light and light energy and photon interchangeably, so you should be familiar with these terms. Okay, before we go on to talk about exactly what happens in the light reactions and how ATP is produced, you need to understand how the pigments are arranged and how what's called photosystems are set up in the thylakoid membrane.